Education Authority of Kenya under the Child Online Protection Program runs an online child protection and education initiative. It is key in ensuring that our children are protected from unsuitable content online. It includes empowering parents and guardians with the required skills and information to deal with risks that children face online. Mercy. Hi, Ramadai. How are you doing? And thank you. You have to you have to give me that greeting, that uh, bonus few. Oh, bonus few. <laughs> I'm so convinced you're a pagan in my head. I am very convinced, but I mean. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, it's quite interesting, you know, how the internet is, you know, amazing and it can be used for, you know, um, so many good things. But then there's, you know, obviously the you know, the downside, the disadvantages to it. And uh, there are certain people who use, you know, the internet for bad. Yeah. Now, how, you know, I mean, how do you think, you know, um, you know different stakeholders and you know, organizations working in this space can create a safe space or a safer internet? Oh, hmm. I feel like that's a very long conversation. And it's one of those things where, Everyone has a part to play. Yeah. So how much time do you have? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited. <laughs> hey. hey. Yeah. There are so many people who need to be doing something about it that are not doing anything about it. So yeah. let me, if you look at it, I think yeah. the people who, who get the short end of the stick always, yeah. is yeah. always going to be the people who in real life mm. are treated with some contempt. Yeah. I feel like we transfer our biases, our hatred in real life yeah. into an online environment. It's just we're much stronger with it online mm. because there's no face to the hate, you know. And I can create a lot of, you know, pseudo accounts and spread hate and spread a lot of propaganda. Yeah. So if we are a community that generally does not treat its women right online, it's very likely that you'll find women are not being treated right. Yeah. If you find that, that uh, que the queer community is not treated right in real life, then yeah. online very likely they're being bullied and a lot of things are happening to them. Yeah. If we don't respect bloggers and mm. influencers, yeah. Online, they're going to receive a lot of hate. So yeah. if you look at it that way, then you start to see what who's doing what and what they could be doing about it. And my my number one to-do list would be the platforms themselves. Yeah. I think we are beyond the point where we say platforms are a private business that can do whatever it is that they want to do. A lot of arguments have been made for, you know, they're, they're like an arm of the government. They're that powerful. And while a lot of people focus on Facebook and how Facebook is bad, or even Instagram, you know, Facebook is a company that owns Instagram, that owns WhatsApp. I think for me, we now have arrived in the next, let's even call it so social media 3.0. You know, Facebook was like 2.0 because now people could finally express themselves. Now we've moved to TikTok and you and I spend a lot of time on TikTok, like a lot of time. Yeah. And these are platforms where... Fine, you get to post whatever you want, but now unlike Facebook and Instagram, it's unfiltered. Yeah. 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 So if you're there posting hate, I mean it's real hate and it's unfiltered hate, it's felt, yeah. and you have a platform, the algorithm will support you. As long as your your people show interest in your content, it's yeah. going to get pushed, it's going to get viral. Yeah. And I believe all the platforms that are going to come after TikTok are going to go in that direction. Like real life people, it's like, now let's remove the filters. Let's remove the, you know, the gloves off. Let's show people in their ugliest, most beautiful sometimes, but yeah. also in their real form. Yeah. So you start to see how the platforms could shape the conversation. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. If you said anything bad about a white person today on, on TikTok, yeah. in two minutes, it's, da it's, it's down they've pulled it down. Those yeah. are community guidelines. It will just happen. Yeah. If there's someone spewing hate on even women, just giving very misogynistic advice online on TikTok, yeah. is it going to get pulled down? Exactly. Yeah. So you start to see platforms have a key role in playing. Yes, users, the, me and you, we have a policing role. Yeah. When I come across something, it's like, say, if, you say, if you see something, mm -hmm. say something. Like, yeah. you have to call it out. Yeah. And... Um, KOT is very good with this. I, I, there's no injustice that doesn't go and call <laughs> in KOT. I mean, there's problems to that as well because mm -hmm. a lot of women 
end up being on the receiving end of the hit of, of that catching stray bullets yeah, yeah of that you know calling out and you know we are standing up for what's right yeah, yeah. that happens a lot but yeah. That's the rule. Like, if you see something, you have to say something. If you see content that's really harmful and mm. dangerous, and from a point of objectivity, not really because I hate this person because they're saying something I don't like, but this is, I mean, everyone can see this is clearly wrong. Yeah. You have to report it. I think yeah. now reporting has become something people are very familiar with. Yeah. Number two, as users, we have to de-platform. Yeah. Okay? Let me give an example. Um, we, we all love Obare's tea. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. but do you have moments when you're going through the stories and you, you realize this is crossing the line? This is crossing into hating territory, sharing personal information. Yeah, That's this is privacy. going into you know violation of rights. Yeah. But you've given him a platform, so there's no chance that he's going to stop with the platform that he has. You yeah. see, yeah. we we create the monsters that we live with. We create mm -hmm. the evils that we live with. If you're in a WhatsApp group and a lot of con conversations that happened in that. WhatsApp group are of a misogynistic nature, whether you like it or not, you are enabling that conversation. You need to de-platform. Yeah? So the role of, of the platforms for me is very clear. This yeah. is what the platforms need to do. Mm -hmm. They have to objectively step up. And it's not just about what they think. You know, they try to play it safe in, in, in the name of freedom of expression. Now I feel like, you know how hate speech was approached in during elections, like if it's hate speech, it's hate speech. There's really no two sides about it. Mm. That's how you, how how zealously you should be promoting uh, vulnerable people online. You mm. have to fight for them because even in real life, nobody fights for them. You know, so That's if true. they're online and they're trying to create this safe niche for themselves, yeah. if I'm going to a a video, a Kenyan TikToker's video, and all the comments are attacking maybe how they look or you know how their physical attributes. There are very, even like self-harm nature, like you, you're encouraging self-harm or you're, you're promoting them to, you know, go and kill themselves or something like that. That's something the platform needs to step up in. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example. I think there was a case some time back, uh, one of this uh, nation media, I think they have a lot of radio stations. Yeah. They posted a picture of two girls in, in a very short, in, in short shots. Yeah. These girls were not even Kenyan, they were American. Yeah. Yeah. But they said, like, they were prompting conversation on their radio station about uh, our teenagers dressing too, too provocatively. Yeah. You see, already there's a problem there that institutions like commercial institutions are not being careful. You can tell that's an institution without a, a policy, without a social media policy, because then why would you expose minors like that? Yeah. But then the comments, that's where the problem is. A lot of the comments were rapey. There were men, you know, very ready to attack. And these are children. You can tell they're minors, that they're men ready to, you know, they're saying, oh, if you, if you want me to do one, two, three, just say, and then I'll do it. So where, where is the platform in that? Like you start to see that the platform has a responsibility. You cannot just be an existing highway for all this hate to be spewed. No, you've, you've actually uh, brought out something that was, um, I've been thinking about a lot. We, we actually don't tie, um, you know, businesses mm -hmm. uh, to human rights. Businesses actually have a duty to protect um, the human rights, not only of its employees, suppliers, etc., but also its customers and users. How do you see that, um, you know, playing out as far as the protection of um, vulnerable groups, um, you know, who are users of these platforms. Yeah. Uh, businesses cannot run away from that responsibility. If if you're, it's so bad that if it's an employee of your company who normally speaks for your company, yeah. says something in their off time that is harmful to a vulnerable group, they need to be held account accountable. There's really no two ways about it. Yeah. It's imputable to it in that. Think about it. When uh, there was a controversial uh, video by Anita, Anita, the radio uh, personality, she yes. had a, a nice, uh, like a nice video that was on YouTube. And then I think yeah. there was, is it Golden Fire? Was, there was an oil in the, in the picture. Yeah. And then the company was very quick to speak against, oh, we didn't sponsor it. Do you see how they're very vocal True. about things that they don't like? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It needs to be the same way. You don't get to... Pick and choose when you're like going to... What you care about. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. So 
what the message I got from that is if I ever see uh, the same brand oil yeah. in a video where a vulnerable member of society is being abused, yeah. The message you're giving me is that you support that abuse. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So it's 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 become that bad. And then it has to start with do you not have a policy where you make up your minds as an institution that we're going to respect women, mm. we're going to respect children, we're going to respect all vulnerable members of society. Yeah. That's where it needs to start. Yeah. You get uh, responses sometimes from these corporates on Twitter, and I think they're really trying to be funny about it. Yeah. But then you'll see something like "Wacha Umama." Yeah. <laughs> and 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 it's, it's, you're like, yeah. wow. I mean, I didn't yeah. know this company supports this kind of. So yeah. if if you're not willing to invest in sensitivity training in your organization, mm. you have to take the fall for it. Whenever something happens that it's your employee who said something that affects people. It just works that way. Because yeah. the other way, let me tell you, you would never get away yeah. with defaming these companies. Mm -mm. If you said anything negative about them, you wouldn't get away with it. They'd go to court the next day. Exactly. So <laughs> why are they getting away with their employees doing things that are harmful to society, yeah. promoting very bad uh, messaging, pro promoting even harmful practices? Like that, that shouldn't be that way. I would rather that they stay neutral yeah. But make sure in your neutrality, you never step on anyone's human rights. But then we know as a company, you actually don't care for the human being. You just care about the money. Yeah. Yeah. What do you see? So as far as, um, you know, this is concerned, what are the, what are the key, what are the key things that companies should, you know, do, you know, to ensure that, um, you know, they have the basic um, you know, they basically have the basic things as, as far as the protection of human rights online is concerned, and especially for uh, vulnerable groups. Yeah. The first thing, they have to go train themselves. The re there's really no shortcut to it. I think a lot of, do you know how we say in law, ignorance is no defense? Mm. In, in real life, it's exactly the same. Mm. You, you don't have space, and especially now that we are fully immersed into the social media world, yeah. you don't have space to say, I don't, I didn't know, yeah. or I didn't intend to. Yeah. I think the worst apologies that corporates give whenever they mess up is that we had no idea this was going to affect you this bad, or we had no idea that these comments would be taken like this. Yeah. That is the worst. Remember the, the saga with uh, the radio station recently that was fined yeah, yes, in yes. millions? Like. Yes. You, your excuse cannot be that you didn't know. So yeah. education, um, that's where you begin. Yeah. You see, where we are coming from as a society yeah. is we are okay with op the oppressed people remaining op oppressed for a very long time. That's the message we've always been emitting from our diodes as a society. Yeah. Like, it's okay mm -hmm. that there are people here we don't like and our biases shine through. What we are telling society right now is that we are moving away from that mm. reality. When we see people who have been oppressed, we are fighting for them. Mm. People who are oppressed deserve a voice. They deserve to be treated as human beings, no matter where you stand, no matter your religion, no matter what you think. We are no longer carrying over generational um, hatred that makes Trauma. no sense to us. Yeah, yeah what, what we are refusing is bad governance. Like, I feel like that's that's me and you's generations like fight is is bad governance. Like we're focused yeah. on what is objectively wrong. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then in the companies, who do you find? You don't find me and you. You find, yeah. you know, furniture. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> you find, you yeah. know, age-old people who belong to the older generation where they are okay with society remaining as it is. Yeah. So they have to be trained. Like it's right from the root. You cannot um, allow adverts to run that are oppressive in their nature. No, that means at the root of it, the person who requested for it is the problem, you know. So you have sensitivity training that has to happen. Yeah. And it's not even hard to find this kind of information. Like it's, it's not impossible to just have someone come to an institution and say, just do an audit and tell us, are we being sexist as an institution? It's so easy, you know. Yeah. And I like that even people are creating... Uh, Institutions specifically to train people. I think um, you saw uh, there was a Bold Network uh, Africa media company that was launched just the other day, mm -hmm. just so they can train people on how to be sensitive about the issues of how to treat queer people in your organization. It's not hard to do these things. You know, the organizations that will tell you this is how you come up with child friendly policies. Yeah. You know, 
So that's where it starts. It starts with training and then it starts with a policy. You have to have a policy as an organization. You have to say, this is where we do not cross the line. We don't post content that is one, two, three, that, that, that looks like this. Mm -hmm. And if that should happen, this is how we hold people responsible. I think that's missing a lot. Not when KOT makes noise that you're going to take responsibility. Immediately it happens. We need to see organizations step up and say, okay, well, my is our employee, we own it, but they did one, two, three, and they're getting punished by probation or they're getting fired or something like that. That needs to happen. What, what happens, or rather what uh, do you think should happen in a case where, let's say, a misogynistic... Yeah ad mm -hmm. featuring let's say an influencer uh, for um, there was a recent case like uh, Omondi um, mm -hmm. um, said some really unfortunate things in an um, in an online ad that he did um, you know for a, a steel company yeah so what what do you think should happen in that particular case because I'm I'm just thinking first this is a contractor this mm -hmm. is some, someone outside the company yeah but then if you think about it, someone inside the company has to add, has, has to have yeah, add said, yeah. yes. So obviously there's a problem there. So what is that? How is that? How should that interaction be like? And what should the company say uh, to the public when these things happen? You know, if you look at that ad and you're so right, you can tell that that's someone who was literally you know, what? what is it called? High, high, walking the tightrope. Yes. Yeah, and they are banking on the shock value of what they're about to say mm. to make it viral so that yeah. they can sell, okay? Yeah. And you can't convince me that the company is not enjoying that. Like, they're enjoying mm. the, we are fighting your battles. Did you mean beating a wife? Did you mean, mm. you know, like, section? did you mean it in a sexual way? Which, mm. either way, mm. is just so wrong, yeah, it's, it's so terrible, sexist. Yeah. One is just promoting violence, the other mm. one is promoting the... Mm. Uh, treating women as, you know, sexual images. I mean, none of yeah. it is correct, right? Yeah. So that tells me, number one, in your agreement, because, you know, they're very strong on agreements. You, you, you know these things. Of course, they, of course. <laughs> the first thing, like, like a corporate will ask for is mm. oh, your terms, and then they'll make sure you sign a very ironclad agreement, right? Yeah. Make sure you don't mention them in a ne any negative light or things like that. Mm. And then there's usually a point person in the company, you know, mm. like this is the person who's going to review your, 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 your content before your you content, post it. Yeah. So what that tells me is there's someone in that company who sat down and, you know, looked at Watched this content. It. Yeah. And to them, maybe they are so, their biases are so strong. They didn't even see anything wrong with them. Maybe they even laughed. They even thought this is hilarious. Post yeah. it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's no training in that organization. Definitely they don't have a policy because if you had a policy, what you're doing when, when an influencer submits content to you is that you're checking the content against your policy. Yeah. I mean, is it sexist content? No. Does it promote violence? No. Does it promote self-harm? No. Does it promote uh, whatever against violence? You, no. You're doing a checklist, so they don't have that. In that case, both the influencer and the corporate need to be held responsible. And for me, what the corporate needed to do is, yes, issue a statement, of course. We need to hear what you really, really mean and use that statement to, te to tell us, are you being genuine or you're just scared that we're going to, you know, lose money from this, whatever. But I need to see more. Yeah. Clearly, it's lack of trading. What are you doing about that? Like, I'm very strong on institutional training. And mm -hmm. I encourage even lawyers, like, when you come across these cases, instead of just going for the money, mm -hmm. even in, in your demand letters and in the planes when you're suing people in court, yeah. when you come across this kind of behavior, don't just demand for the money only. Demand that there be institutional change. In, demand in for training. Country. With, with evidence, you know, like demand for, um, what is it called? Like in, in, in the cases of domestic abuse in other countries, you see people have to go for trainings and report that they have learned how not yeah. to do it, you know. Yeah. So it has to be the same way. Like there needs to be a monitoring system. Yeah. You can demand these things from court. Like there's really nothing you cannot demand for and from organizations. Like we will not let this issue go yeah. until, yes, you have to pay us because that was wrong. But then also we need to see that you have educated your organization so that we make sure this never happens again. Yeah. And then on Eric's part, he also needs to be held accountable. What is the problem that he, he he's in the middle of such a controversy, not the first time, not the second time, not the third time. You know, like he's frequently in the middle of such controversy. Could it be that you're trying to make a joke out of society's uh, attitude against women? And then number two, as a society, why are we giving you such a big platform to continue doing the same thing? Yeah. So both of them need to be held socially 
accountable. And the only way to do that is to deplatform. There's really no other way to do it. That's true. In my opinion, um, I feel like influencers who are misogynistic or who, are, who have a history of that and have not shown um, any progress, you know, as far as fixing that particular part of themselves should not actually should not actually be in campaigns. Yeah. And we've seen that in the past, a lot of, um, you know, people who are like that do not actually get um, a lot of opportunities. But when it comes to influencers who are celebrities, I think the bar is different. Or rather, you know, they tend to, I think brands tend to look at them um, differently and, you know, they have way more, they have way more access and chances, um, you know, than, you know, than other ordinary influencers. Then punish the brand. That, that would be, for me, that is where it hurts. You see, it's like a vicious cycle. If you don't feed the monster, the monster doesn't grow, yeah, you know. Yeah. So you grow on social media, you get, an, you get this notorious following, then corporates are behind you to yeah. fund this growth. Yeah. And then you continue growing and it's the same thing. Yeah. So if you start losing followers from this, yeah. and then if the money stops coming in from corporates, then you have no option but to change. Like we, the thing we fail to realize in the, in the social media world is that no one is too big to fall. No one is beyond our reach. Like we can literally deplatform you. We can make you famous and we can bring you down. Yeah. Thank, the, the, the thing that worries me at the same time is that perhaps our society hasn't transformed enough to a point where we are f willing to fight all the way. Like we are willing to make noise for one day. Yeah. But humorously make noise about it. You understand? Like make fun of people. And I think we do that a lot. We make light of our suffering and yeah. we humorize uh, bad behavior and then we move on from it. So people continue doing the same things they've been doing mm. without paying for the consequences. Mm. So again, as a society, the, the groundwork is not done. The grassroots work is not done. We mm. still have to go back home and teach our kids like this is, you cannot be this kind of a human being. I'm raising you to be a more sensible human being, a more just human being, a human being who supports justice in this world so that mm. we have a, a new generation that, you know, that grows away from it and, mm. and educates our parents and everyone else who is against the change to mm. change. Because then we, we have to move together as a society. We have to have like an all-encompassing en um, change. And then maybe now we flip the script to the government, like what is it really doing about um, the behavior that happens online? To be honest, I am not a big fan of regulation of, of speech. You know that. I do yeah. not support uh, government involvement in regulation of speech. Mm. What I do support, however, is I feel like there are more powerful ways of getting behavior change than criminalizing conduct. Yeah. For example, we do have like a commission on gender and equality, a constitutional commission on gender and equality. Yeah. All right. For some reason, they don't seem to have immersed themselves into the world we are in right now. I yeah, feel... The digital space. Yes. 90% of our, our world happens digitally. Yeah. Okay? So if there's been... Like, they were very loud when it came to, you know, having women in, in, in parliament and, you know, having a, a, a female CJ. I mean, that's very strong. And I applaud, you know, what do you call them? We call them the big acts. Yeah. You know, the big whatever. But in the subtle places where we live in, where the pain is felt, where the suffering is felt, I feel they're missing, you know? So if there's online conduct that is punishable, and a lot of it can be taken to court, you don't see them there. You yeah. don't, they, they totally miss out on the conversation. And it would be something as strong as having a statement from such a constitutional commission against a corporate or against a platform. Yeah. That would be strong enough to cause behavioral change. True. If you had, for example, a little black book of badly behaved companies or companies that do not promote equality, do not promote justice, and you have, and every time a company does something, you even have like a, a ledger where you 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 rank them in, in order of how badly they're doing in terms of you know societal issues. Yeah. That is something that would push on change. Yeah. Yeah. They used to have that uh, on, on corruption, for example. They had a corruption tracker for private companies. Yeah. Which companies have been uh, mentioned in corruption scandals? And mm. then companies would boast as, at how highly they ranked in that. You know, you see, we are number one and because we, we, we're not involved in any corruption scandals, blah, blah. Yeah. It would be the same thing, you know. Yeah. So I feel like there's a space for 
Um, quiet regulation, I do not support coming up with criminal conduct because then the what has always happened is the people you're trying to protect end up being victims of the laws you've come up with. And that happened with the cyberbullying uh, clause in the Cyber Crimes, and mm. the cyber crimes Act. Yeah. You create a law that is so ambiguous that mm. when a woman says, I'm being bullied online, mm. she ends up being the person who's arrested for bullying just because she spoke up against bullying because sure. the law is very ambiguous like that. Yeah. But if we, if we saw the support of these government entities created to protect people, mm. just something as simple as a word or a retweet or, you know, a tweet from them saying whatever yeah. happened to so-and-so is very unfortunate and it never it, it doesn't need to happen we need to stop supporting this organization. Behavior would mm. change. As far as legislation is concerned, you've mentioned the cyberbullying yeah. um, section in the cyber crimes law. Mm -hmm. Now, I I don't agree with how um, some laws are um, are drafted, in the sense that they treat the internet as an other. Mm -hmm. If you think about bullying, for instance, it happens. Offline yeah. as well. Yeah. So the online the online element is just uh, technology enabled, mm. but it's actually still bullying. Yeah. Do you think that if we can have um, a, some sort of harmonization, yes, there still mentions the tech element, mm -hmm. but we have you know we have laws that are fast, extremely specific. Yeah. But um, the you know, in case uh, in case they can happen in both worlds, mm -hmm. right? Um, you don't have like separate laws. It's yeah. it's it's one thing that in, that now includes now the tech element. Yeah. What do you think about in that? In the ideal, actually, a cybercrime law should only cover the conduct that you don't find offline. In an ideal sense, so if there's bullying offline and there's bullying online, the, the how it should be approached is regulate the conduct, not not the medium. Fine, we are so obsessed with the internet right now and we're like 10 years late. You know, I mean, this is not this is not our biggest struggle. So what happens in 10 years when they realize it's not even social, it's not even the internet that's the problem. It is social media. Are you going to come up with now a social media crimes act? Yeah, I, I, like the, in technology moves so fast, yeah. you can't legislate like that. You legislate behavior. You don't legislate the platform or, or the medium. So yeah. I agree with you. There, sh there should be conduct that is forbidden, then mm. perhaps as an incentive, if we do agree that when it happens online, the effects are more catastrophic. Yeah. So if it happens in an online context, let the punishment be enhanced from yes. how it would be in an offline context. I have no problem with that. Yes. But you know, it's almost like that ship has sailed. And now that you've brought up legislation, you start to see how we've embedded um, mistreatment of vulnerable groups even into our laws. Yeah. We, they, we don't create them with that eye. And mm -hmm. I'll give an example. We have uh, a protection, um, it's Protection from Domestic Violence Act, for yeah. example. We have an, an act that just protects people from pro domestic violence. Yeah. But you, you go through it and you imagine the, the elaborate procedure that has been prescribed there. Yeah. And you're like, who, who's going to go for these orders? Like, the same person who needs immediate and emergency protection has to jump after loop, loophole after loophole after loophole. When are they going to get justice? Again, look who you're coming up against. You're coming up against a lot of the times male judges and male magistrates who sometimes have no sensitization training who are going to tell you the same thing you'd be told on Twitter. Mm. Eh? Mm. There are two sides of the story. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And you're the victim. And you're the victim. And they'll be t busy telling you there are two sides of the story. In instead of giving you protection first and then dealing with the entire, whatever, you know, the, the root of the problem much, much later. Yeah. So again, the attitudes, you start to see the attitudes popping up in our, not only in our legislation, but it's also in how our entities are structured. The fact that parliament has not figured out how to achieve the two-thirds gender rule up to now. Whereas it, it will be like in your mind, it's like, oh, die. It's so obvious. Like, why wouldn't you just, you know, the fact that we haven't been able to achieve that. The fact that there's, um, there's a, a Twitter account I follow that I find so interesting. It's called Manel Watch. And they highlight every time there's a panel that's just all male or it's like a token woman, you know, this one token woman in the panel. They'll point it out. 
I was, then I was thinking someone should start another one for all government photos because it's so hilarious. Like today, just watch on your feed. There is no government photo that will ever have like women in a substantial amount to men. It's True. always just men. Take it even further. Look at your standard and your daily nations and your and your newspapers. Every single day on the cover page, not even just the big political story. Yeah. Look at even all the you know all the pictures that, that they used to tease the stories. Yeah. All men. True. Yeah. So you start to see it's an attitude thing, and if you not changing behavior from the inside, then there's no way automatically online it's going to change. That's very true. I feel like inclusion, yeah. inclusion of vulnerable groups, like in your, you know, in your, in your company and you, in your space, actually helps yeah. to sort to sort out some of these um, uh, biases because you find that these people are actually not seeing. Because if you're all men, you don't expect you don't expect where spaces that um, women and other vulnerable groups are not included are going to be are not are going to be safe. No, it's not going um, to happen. Yeah, for them. Yeah. Mm, so it's so it's quite interesting. So anyway, how can how can vulnerable groups be protected? Yeah, there's something a lot of people keep saying, and I I agree with it to some extent, but I also want us as a society to fight against it. You know, this concept of creating safe spaces, I think that's very important. But for me, it's uh, we've been forced to resign to creating our own safe spaces. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So you're, we are enabling uh, a totterer society to continue tottering us because we are creating our own safe spaces. And I always say, that space is our space. Mm. The open space is our space. Mm. Yes, we can always have our niches where we discuss things where only us understand, mm. but it's supposed to be that we create this whole space supposed to be a safe space for us. Mm. It's not our job as victims mm. to go and create for create ourselves sp safe, safe spaces. spaces. No, it's our job as a society to make sure that all these spaces are safe enough that whoever wants to say whatever they want to say, they're safe enough to say that. And you do realize it's okay to exist in a society where you don't agree with anything, but you don't have to attack me. You don't have to attack my personality. I find it so humorous that it is impossible to criticize anything a woman has said without referring to either her lack of or too much of sex like it's it just always has to go there when a man is critiquing a woman's views on on twitter it's either oh is she married or oh, she's not married that's a problem or oh, she's a whole it's never about what she's saying so it's possible to actually critique what someone is saying without going into going, personal attacks uh, yeah, yeah it's yeah. Quite, quite possible and again this is land behavior we've we've seen that this is what happens online so this is what emboldens people to do. So the only way to create, to protect vulnerable people, people online is to make the main highway safe. There's nothing for funding small spaces because mm. then you're enabling bad behavior and it's just going to continue being like that until they find new targets. If we, all of us have our own small safe spaces, they're going to look for another target and they're going to do the exact same thing to this new target. Yeah. It's never going to change. So the the responsibility is not on the victim. The responsibility is on abusive men to be called out. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, how, how do you see this space, um, you know, going forward? What kind of policies or maybe legislation that can come into this space so that, you know, we have more protection of uh, vulnerable groups online? Um, I don't see legislation happening. I don't support it. I told you, like, legislation is really something you should keep off until it's, I feel like we've already legislated what is harmful society uh, behavior. You know, like there are some non-reducible minimum, media, uh, minimums. Don't kill, don't murder, don't steal. We've already agreed on those ones. So leave legislation out of it. But have policies. Policies is good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Policy, even from a government perspective, you know, like if you have government officials speaking out against bad behavior online, that's strong enough. Mm -hmm. Have policies from the platforms themselves. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I like how... <laughs> After so many years of uh, conversation, during the whole Trump saga, just before the elections, yeah. Twitter wakes up one day and realizes, oh my God, it's so bad. We have to step in and do something about it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, 
for a long time you keep off and you say okay we just want to promote free speech then you realize yeah there's a way this also looks like endorsement there's a way our silence looks like endorsement yeah. and like i was giving you the example of of tiktok in the next frontier of social media platforms it's going to be like that because yeah. you're giving people this and unfettered space to speak their mind and say whatever it is and let me tell you it's the most beautiful thing that has come off the internet i 100% believe so like uh, having a platform where people don't have to pretend yeah that's the best thing that could ever happen to the internet yeah. but it's also the most dangerous thing so yeah. what they're going to realize is just like in a home you're allowed to be yourself mm. but if you're being yourself hurt someone else then that is behavior that needs to be reined there's in. a problem Yeah and then I'm I'm seeing for the future like people realizing and I again this are, this is this is why you consume the good with the bad I, I we we mentioned uh, Obare's uh, platform mm. at the beginning of the, of the one thing I really like about his platform is sometimes the followers will agree that something is wrong and they'll really go after it mm. yeah? yeah I don't agree when it's you know goes into bullying and when it goes into uh, you know violation of privacy But sometimes they'll see something is wrong and the government is not doing anything about it and they'll stand up and they'll actually show you. and it's a very good case study on the you know strength in numbers mm. and the power you know power of the platforming because these people can decide to just unfollow everyone one day and people will, influencers will be without followers true you understand so you start to see where we are headed mm. in as much as people are pushing for authenticity they're going to realize how powerful they are in creating the monsters in our society mm. if it's someone who's consistently pushing harmful content the only reason they're doing that is because they have a platform and the only th- reason they have a platform is because of your follow your likes your tweets your retweets mm. and then if you if you take that away from it then they, they just have nothing what I see right now is people follow accounts just for shock value like you really don't agree with what that person is saying but you're like it's hilarious it's so wrong it's hilarious let me just follow it you're giving them a platform true. they continue <laughs> to grow you know true yeah that's very true thank you so so much um you know for this conversation i'm hoping that we can have a part two and part three because <laughs> you know i mean we cannot i don't i don't think we can exhaust this topic yeah Um, and also I feel like it is also important um, sort of like educate people on what's going on and you know and let them know that some things are actually not normal because some people have been abused so much for instance if you look at journal- some journalists some women journalists mm-hmm. politicians influencers you see you've been yeah. abused for so long so you think that this is normal mm-hmm. it actually isn't yeah so thank you so much well thank you I'm, mm. I'm definitely game to have any conversation that involves just Can you imagine like the reason yeah. we're having this conversation is just to convince people that you need to treat people as people like <laughs> how ridiculous is that like it it should be obvious it should be obvious yeah but here so? we are. yeah 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 so every time there's a conversation about equality and just really dignity and treating people with respect for me it's not even an argument it's not even a religious conversation that like yeah. the bible says this it's just honey you you need to step up like foundational. Just, it's foundational your your treatment you treating other people poorly it has nothing to do with religion it, it, it has something to do with your internalized hatred and biases for you and that's just what it is.